Hey everyone, welcome back. And today I'm going to talk about all of the new releases I read in February. It was really rough for me when it came to new releases. I didn't really rate any of them very high. They all were very much disappointments to me. So I started off and I read Dane's Mark by Laura Lee. It is in her Breed series. And Dane is a character that if you've read the series, you've wanted his book for a really long time. And he's such a unique character. I was very excited to get his story of him finding his mate. And um, with the Breed series, this is um, basically it's based in the future. Scientists have taken animal DNA, they've spliced it with humans, they've created this hybrid em embryos, and they were kept in horrible conditions and treated like animals instead of humans. They escaped, and they are now living in the world and have like their own rules that they have passed through like the governments and stuff, and they're still trying to bring down like the scientists and the evil people who have done all of this. And then you had this character who was like the original um, breed who was someone who naturally had been born with like more animalistic, uh, I guess, powers. And so he was like the basis for why they started to do all of these experiments. He is still alive. He's like over 100 years old because apparently breeds age slowly. It's sort of like like vampires age, like or don't age. That's sort of like what happens. Like breeds age to a certain point and then they stop aging. And this is something that they have tried to keep hidden from the world. So Dane is the son of like one of the the like the original breed who escaped. And he has always been like helping um, the breeds, but he and his dad and his mom, they are um, not known to be breeds at all. They are thought just to be like um, rich people who own companies and they just have like dealings with the breeds and kind of back them. So Dane, he's been on like secret missions and everything and helping out. So he comes across his mate when he's visiting this one woman and working in this town. Um, he previously had been in love with this person, but she found her mate. And so he's been devastated ever since then and wanting to just uh, stay close to her. Well, he comes across his mate, but he doesn't realize that that's who it is. In a way he does, but in a way he's like, no, because the girl's only like 19 years old. So he's like, she's too young for me. They separate for eight years, nine years, and then they meet up again. And she is very angry with him because the way that they left off nine years prior was not good. And that's their story. I was disappointed because you get just like a little bit at the beginning. I think it's like maybe a chapter. And it's like, okay, this girl, you've never met her before in any of the other books, which would be fine if you got more of like their history together. But you get maybe one chapter, it's literally like two scenes. And all of a sudden you're supposed to be like, oh yeah, like that's definitely his mate. It didn't work for me at all. Like I wanted more. I wanted to see more and then jump ahead nine years. And the book was really short. I think it was only a little over 200 pages. I read it in a day. I was like, it needed more, and it needed more at the beginning to really tell their story and to make it believable, because it just didn't seem believable at all. It just seemed sort of like instant love, which I know they're mates, but come on, I needed more. So that one was a disappointment. I gave it like three to three and a half stars for me. And then the next one I read was The Raft by Gina Showalter. I struggled with this one too. And it had two of my favorite characters from the Lords of the Underworld series that have now been placed into the spinoff series. Both are strong characters. And I really liked them. And I always liked Nika, who is the, the female heroine in here. She's a harpy. And she 
can she's an oracle so she can see the past present future and it gets mixed up inside of her head she's a little odd um, because sometimes she doesn't know like what she's seen if it's the past and she forgets stuff so she has holes in her memory so she like leaves stuff everywhere to try and like remember or jog her memory whenever she comes to you because she'll black out she also due to an injury as a child she can't hear so she reads lips and then you have Wrath, who is the like adopted son of Hades, and he has his own little kingdom. And the story is supposed to be that he had a queen, and she got killed when he was fighting to gain his kingdom. And he etched like the song into all of her bones to try and like revive her. But the only way that she can come back to life is if all of her bones are put back together. And as he was etching the song into her bones, demons were, like, taking off with her bones. So he spent centuries trying to put her skeleton back together. And Mika has had a vision that if she gets put back together, basically all of the harpies are done for, as well as uh, the men who have been, who this whole series has been about up until this book. And I was disappointed because it felt like We've had this series, and it's been about um, these warlords, this astroplaneta warlords, and then all of a sudden, we just get, like, Nika and Raph thrown into here, and it wasn't, like, a good, cohesive joining, I felt. I felt like there was a story that didn't get told in this previous series, and it's like, how can we just make it fit in this new series so I can get the story told? And I didn't think it went very well. So I had problems with it. Because I've really enjoyed the series. I've liked the warlords. I've liked learning everything that's happening to them. So I just kind of felt like the, the warlord who was in this one, he was just like an afterthought. And everything that was going on with them was really just an afterthought. So I only gave it like three stars. I didn't like it. <laughs> then I read The Bride by Allie Hazelwood. It was my first Allie Hazelwood novel, and I thought I would like it because I like vampires and werewolves, and I didn't like this one at all. In fact, I read half of it faithfully, and then I DNF'd it because I just I did not like it. You basically have um, a marriage of an arranged marriage between. A vampire and a werewolf. Vampires, werewolves, humans. They all hate each other. And when to keep the peace, you have basically children who are exchanged amongst the werewolves, the vampires, and the humans basically as captives. So if anyone like breaches this truce, then like the kids are going to get killed. So Misery, who's the vampire, she was one of these kids who was in the human world. She grows up, she gets released, and she's supposed to go back to the vampires. Well, when she was in, with the humans, the only person who was close to her was another girl, and it was a human girl. So that human becomes like a reporter. She disappears, and she is nowhere to be found. But the only lead Misery has is with the werewolf. So when her dad approaches her saying, hey, I now want you to go marry the alpha of the werewolves, she agrees to it because she's looking for a friend and she's hoping that she can find her friend. And so that's basically the story of that book. And I just, it was very boring. There was no chemistry. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the romance. It was just very blah. So I didn't like it. And I DNF'd it. Other people have had great, you know, remarks. They loved it. So, I don't know. That might be one that you just have to try and read for yourself. But it was, it was not for me. And then I read Heartless Hunter. I really liked this book. It was so unique and interesting. So, you have this witch. And witches used to be, like, high-ranking. They controlled society. And then there was a revolution. 
and the humans started murdering and killed like the queen witches. And so this one witch, she wasn't a witch at first because she was just a child, but the government and the revolutionaries found out that this, her grandmother was a witch. And so they were coming to take her grandmother away. And she basically gave her grandmother up because the grandmother was like, I don't want you to die because anyone who is caught with a witch or sympathizes with a witch, they die. So she gave up her grandmother. And by doing this, she's like the beloved darling of the, um, the revolution and the capital, basically. So when she turns 16, something happens. And she is now a witch. And she makes it her mission to free other witches. So she uses her power and she's like, I'm going to free all of the other witches to kind of pay for the fact that her grandmother was murdered as well as her grandmother's friends. Very brutal. Like, oh my gosh, it's horrific. And I will say that when they are casting and doing magic, they usually like cut themselves and use blood. And that is how all the witches have been found out is because they are basically stripped down and looked to see if there are any cut marks on them. She's very sneaky and very crafty and how she gets her blood. And I read it and I was like, Oh, huh. it's a little horrified. But I was also like, that's very smart. It was the most thought out plot point ever. And it made so much sense. And I was like, huh, desperate times calls for desperate measures. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you do that? So if you read it and you know what I'm talking about, because I don't want to have any spoilers, let me know what you, you thought. But it was, it was a good book. Um, and so as she's known as the Crimson Moth, freeing all of these witches, that's her like night job. During the day, she's just like this debutante who um, has a lot of money and she strings guys along. And so it's like she's just this vapid airhead. That is her persona, which is not who she is at all. In reality, she's very intelligent and can manipulate people and is very good at like getting information from all of these men until she meets her best, like one of her best friends, like his brother. So her best friend is also in love with her, but she doesn't recognize it. She doesn't know it. She falls for his brother who is like the head like witch hunter who has an idea and thinks that she is probably the crimson moth that he has to find. So it's definitely an enemies to lovers story. They hate each other at first and yet there's some chemistry there and he's like, I have to get close to her because I think she's the crimson moth and I have to bring her down. And she's like, I have to get close to him because I need information. I liked it. I like this book a lot. It leaves off on a cliffhanger and the next book won't be out until next year. So I'm sad about that, but I recommend this book. It was a good read. And that was all the new releases that I read in February. So thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these or if you plan on reading any of them and I will see you in the next video.